ladies of el salón the chronicles oye ladies of el salón the chronicles escucha please lo linda and we're back mari you look like como que te treñía like what the hell <laughs> folks it's season four and all things go i'm liz we're back i'm mari i'm suli what the Hi. hell is going on mari get, get, what are you doing uh, so, uh, damn, way to put me on the spotlight. Holy um, shit. Um, <laughs> so, holy shit. I'm flushed. Holy shit is an understatement. Okay, so this is a little bit gross, but... Um, TMI. <laughs> so, I have been up since like four in the morning, and it is now, what, 10, 18? Uh, because uh, I went out... Well, okay, no. I'll backtrack. I have been trying to eat better. And so yesterday for lunch, instead of like indulging because I knew I had dinner plans with my family, I decided to go to the supermarket and get uh, a packet of like the bumblebee tuna. And I got the spicy uh, Thai chili one, which was great. So I bought like a couple of pouches because they were like four for five dollars or something. So I bought two of those and two lemon pepper and whatever. And I got some crackers in the office. I ate the first one and it was so good that I opened the second pouch. So I had two pouches. Ya yo veo. This. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, you know, I was fine. Everything was good. Um, and then I came home. I went to the gym, worked out, whatever. Came home, changed, got dressed, and went with my kids. And we went out to the place where Zuli hosted uh, her grandmother's oh, birthday, okay. which was awesome. The food was amazing. We ordered sangria. Everybody enjoyed the food. Yeah, the that was wonderful. We need to go were, back, guys. We need to go back. Yes. That was nice. Mm -hmm. The kids were, like, raving about the steaks and the pasta and everything. Anyways, so I came home. It was really nice. a really nice evening. Went to sleep at 4 in the morning. It's like, I felt like I had a boulder in my stomach and I'm like, what is going on? Like, and I figured, all right, maybe, you know, it's time for a bowel movement in the middle of the night. I don't know. So I tried to go to the bathroom, nothing. It was just nothing, just pain. It was just like mm. something was going on and I couldn't understand. So I drank water. I, you know, whatever I tossed and turned, went back to the bathroom. At one point, Randy came to the bathroom. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, one second. Uh, can you, sorry about that. So at one point, Randy comes to the bathroom and he's like, are you okay? Cause I disappeared for like <laughs> 30 minutes and nothing was happening. It really, nothing was happening. And I didn't understand. Like, it was just like a really uncomfortable feeling. I don't typically eat spicy and, uh, you know, <laughs> It decided, I don't know, I decided yesterday to do that. So this morning, uh, right before we're supposed to come on and whatever, my asshole decides mm -hmm. now is the time <laughs> to, <laughs> to teach you not to eat spicy. So, um, so yeah, so if you see me flushing and whatever, it's just, I, I think I delivered a set of twins. Um, and... <laughs> And I wasn't warned or prepared, and uh, it's left boom, boom, me, boom, 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 fireball. <laughs> <laughs> it is horrible, and it's so gross, and I'm blushing, but it's the truth. I just couldn't, like, I, it, I was like, oh, and it hurt so bad. It was like, wow. And you determined that it was not the Rhodesio, but it was, in fact, no. the, uh, the tuna yeah. packet. Yes, because... That yeah, because I think that, like, they fermented in my stomach. Oh, oh my God. God. It was like... I haven't had breakfast like, yet. My... <laughs> it was like, it was like flames coming out. I was just, I, and it was like, I oh literally, my God. like, I had to have like my bidet on at the same time. Like, I, I'm insane. sorry. Like, I'm, I, like, I'm sitting here feeling traumatized. And so now, you know, I mean, what happens when that happens? You get raw booty. And, you know, I got to sit here and, you know, pretend to be comfortable. So if your you know, asshole was on fire. So, guys, wow. it still is. <laughs> let me t let me tell you a little since you went into that description. Let me give you a little TMI about an article that I read. So um, if 
if you ever have the sensation that your booty is itching, Scratch. I'm going to tell you why. No, Ooh. I'm going to tell you what it is. <laughs> so at, at night, in the morning hours, your booty releases from the intestines these worms that are microscopic. And they're long and white, and they come out of your booty, and they sit on your butthole, and they wiggle. And that's the sensation that you get that you want to scratch because they're wiggling <laughs> in your booty. So this is why it's important for people to wash their ass when they wake up in the morning if you decide that you don't want to take a full shower because this is what is being released. So cuando tuve gente... Especially men. I've seen men do this a lot. Scratch. You see them like scratching their butthole. It's because of that. Because one, you didn't wipe correctly. And two, because these worms come out of your butthole. Okay. It is fucking disgusting. Wash your ass, people. Wash so, your ass. So, so hold on a second. My that was, God. That was, that was my PSA, by the way. But hold okay. on a second. Wait, wait, wait. But I... I so I have heard of that, but it's a condition, not just like on a regular. So oh no, this worms? is everybody. This happens to everyone. And so what happens? There in your but what happens if you don't have an itch? Then you don't have the worms, or they didn't release, and now you're infected inside. Like what's happening? So or you're either a, you're immune. not, either you're a not feeling them, or b because it does happen, you're not feeling it, or b you're clean. You 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 wipe correctly. You clean. You wash. So they're you're getting rid of them. Wait, Listen, I strongly you, suggest you, bidets. Right. Yes. So, can, can I, can you put a bidet on any toilet? Yes. Like, is this an attachment that I can put inside or, or do I have yes. to have you and Randy over for dinner? So Randy can, with a secondary. Well, motor. yes. No, you have to have us over for dinner. Which by the way, we need bidet. to, we need to plan something really quickly and I'll buy the bidet. <laughs> Guys, I'm, I'm so sorry because this is really gross of me to share, but it's, no, no, know, no. It's, but it's I have, happening. You guys are wondering. I have a question. It's part of life. It's so, part of life. I have two you know? questions. Zuli, first of all, what the fuck are you reading? And where? I don't even know how. I don't even know how I came. Actually, it was a TikTok. It was a TikTok. You and then I much? and then when when I saw the TikTok, I was like, oh, what? And I had to like actually Google because I needed to know more about these worms that come out of your butthole. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So TikTok has been proving to have a lot of interesting stuff because I, I, my kids yes. and I'm like, but it's all not bad. The other thing is, do you guys um, stick your finger up your a-hole when you're cleaning it after you, you know, like as part of your cleaning process? Only when I take a shower. Right. Okay. Look at Maddie's face. Oh, right? I, Maddie's like, I'm not I, putting I'm not anything sure. right there. Right. Right. It's raw. Ain't nothing going in there right Ponte now. Vaselina. Ponte Vaselina. But yeah, yeah I'm I about to get some A&D lotion, you know, like I mean, I do for the babies. I always use wipes after the fact, whether it's number one or number two. And I make sure that I, but definitely when I shower, I go into all the orifices. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. When I shower. That's good to know. That's good I to get know. in there. Right. Well, um, Zuli, my question is though, I, I don't, I don't typically see men scratching their ass. Like, where do you see these I men do. scratching? I do. I know. At work. <laughs> at work. Where are And not you? only at work, not only at work, I've seen them. One day I was driving up 42nd street. Uh, well, down the avenues, and I saw actually a woman, a woman, in her Scratching. work clothes. It wasn't like it wasn't like it was a homeless person, a woman. And it was early in the morning. There was not a lot of people in the street, and I guess she thought no one was watching her. Someone's always, always watching. Always watching. You. Yeah. And yeah. and she had her hand inside her pants, and she was going to town in her butthole. And then she proceeded to smell it. Oh. Oh and this okay. is why, unless you know a person's kitchen or their habits, you don't fuck around with anybody when it comes to mm -mm. food. Mm -mm. And I was or like, well, that's nasty. Yeah, no, well, that's speaking, nasty. this is a great segue, because speaking of assholes, assholes, I have my, <laughs> am I the asshole? So uh, we're going to veer out of this topic, and uh, wow. I'll read for you <laughs> what I have today. I, I'm still blushing. I'm just like so like, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed that I actually just shared that. But hey, whatever. I'm going to have to look I'm up human. this worm thing. I'm going to look it up because I can't. I'm going to have to look up the worm thing also. But that's not, that wasn't what happened to me. 
Uh, what happened no, I, to me yeah. was some <laughs> spicy Thai chili tuna. That's what happened. I'll never eat that shit again. Um, anyways, okay. Am I the asshole for telling my stepson he can't stay in my house? Oh. My stepson, age 24, is getting kicked out of his apartment because he doesn't want to pay rent anymore. Hmm. His roommate found another tenant and asked him to leave. He asked if he could move in with me and his mom, and I said no. Some background here. He's, 20, he's a 24-year-old college graduate who works part-time when he decides to work. Uh, I helped pay for his expenses while he attended college, and I feel like with him being 24, it's time to man up and at least attempt to provide for yourself. Me not allowing him to live in my home means he would have to move from Miami to Illinois to live with his dad. He insists that he doesn't want to move, but he also refuses to get a job. Hmm. Me and his mother try to explain that you have to work in order to get what you want. We've sent him job postings and I wrote his resume. I even added a little fluff to the resume to help him get interviews. He would get interviews, in some cases make it to drug testing, but would forget to take his drug test. So needless to say, I'm done trying. So I thought, fast forward. Oh, I'm sorry. So I thought, fast forward to this week. He calls with his sob story about getting kicked out for non-payment. I tell him he can't stay in my house because he refuses to work. I can't imagine working 10 to 12 hour a day while a healthy college educated man sleeps till 1 p.m. and parties all night on my dime. So because I care about him, I offered to buy him a plane ticket back to Illinois. He refused because he doesn't want to leave his car. According to him, he's put too much money in the car and he doesn't want to leave it. Uh, he doesn't want to leave his belongings. Okay. I offered to rent him a U-Haul truck with a trailer as one way, as a one-way rental. He refused saying he doesn't want to drive. According to him, the only option is to live with us. At this point, I'm done, so I flat out said no, and get back to Illinois the best way you can. Am I the asshole? By the way, his mother says she agrees with me, but I can tell she wants to let him stay. What do you guys think? He's not an asshole. I agree wholeheartedly with what they're Definitely. doing. He's 24. Listen, if you are doing something for yourself and you're contributing and fine, great, come and stay. Pero esa vagancia, esa vagamundería, absolutely not. Get the fuck out of no. here. No. It don't. sounds like a setup. It sounds like the minute he gets to Miami, they're going to be raising a 24-year-old. So absolutely not. The he minute to... he gets in there, he's not going to be able to get him out. This is called tough love. And he needs to get his shit together. He's no longer a child. He's 24 years old. Get it together. Get it together. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I feel like in his in his situation, I do think because this, and he refuses to get a job. And, you know, it's obvious that he doesn't want to work. Um, but in this day and age, I feel like people are, you know, living with their parents longer. Can't yes. that be attributed to that? Like, can't that be? If he wants of, to like, get a, you know, absolutely. If he wants yeah. to get a job and 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 chip in, but not not as a freeloader. No, exactly. I'm but sorry. so here's so here's the thing, no. Marty. I it has, I think it's important to separate it out. I don't have a problem with a 35 year old man, 45. I mean, you know, we're all probably in some way one paycheck away from either being homeless or being those people, right? So if mm -hmm. I had to go live with Zuli or you or my sister or whomever or vice versa, I hope that nobody would be like, well, Lisa, yeah, you could just hang out and sleep until I would love that. But I would I would have to pay rent or if I wasn't working or unable to get a job, do something else, clean the house, do the kitchen, pay, take care of the kids, try, whatever it is. Right. So, yes, carry you your live, weight somehow. Carry your weight somehow. So, yes, given the circumstances of what's happening in the world today, yeah, more people are living together and kids are living with their parents for longer. But that does not equate or translate into uh, you're going to sleep all day, party all night, and live your best life while I'm busting my ass. Get the fuck out of here. No. Yeah, I mean, what does that promote? What happens if he didn't have his parents or someone to help mm -hmm. him or give him a helping hand? He would have to figure it out. So figure it out. Right. So Figure would you guys you would you guys be able to tell your kids get the fuck out? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Mm. Yes. Because at, at, at 24, if you're in college or in a pro medical school or something that doesn't allow you to work, I'm going to support you wholeheartedly. No problem. Mm. Right. But the example that you're giving is that he's just, I'll fuck it. He's just like, mm -hmm. I'm going to live here or whatever. And it's hard. But if you don't do that, you're doing a disservice to him. Right. Yeah. I'm because what happens if you're not there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 and you're doing you're doing him no favors because yeah, when you guys are not there or whatever, then what? His friend kicked him out. Yeah, so that's true. he has to do something for his life. That's what he can. Right. I refuse. I refuse. I don't want to drive my car. I refuse. That sounds like, like he, entitlement to me. I was gonna he say, sounds. He's not very I was. Entitled. I was just about to say that he sounds like he's always had it easy, and he mm -hmm. just doesn't want to assume any responsibility. You know, like I told my son, like he doesn't want to work right now. And I think boys tend to be a little bit more lazier than girls. Girls, once they get it going, they tend to stick to their responsibilities. Yeah. Um, so he quit his job, which happened to be a very good job at Target. Yeah. He didn't have to pay any bills. This was money for him to spend and buy things that he likes. Um, and he was, uh, a lot of people were like, well, were you asking him for half of the paycheck? That would be unfair. No, I was not. But what I did tell him was you had to save half or a certain percent of your paycheck. So much so that that was a year ago. He still has money in his savings. I don't give him money. I told him whatever. If you want to spend things on like food or stupid little things, that's coming out of your account. Once that account is depleted, that's it. I'm not giving you anything. You're going to have to figure it out. Because you're choosing he's not, not to work. Yeah. Right. But I, I do pay for other things. Uh, like, you know, yeah. I do. Obviously, you know, he lives with me. But I did tell him that for his first year in college, we are going to his father and I are going to help him as far as, you know, things that he needs. But he is responsible for getting a job because we're not going to pay for his college, pay for books, transportation or anything else that he needs while he's going to school and also pay for him to go hang out and have fun and have spending money. He needs to get a job and figure that part out. No, my daughter's so. required to work and maintain right. her averages in school. She's that there is no because if you're not playing sports and you're not engaged in anything else, then you need a job. And she's been at the same place for almost over a year now. And the same I know, I remember. Yeah, yeah, she yes. she's required to save half of her paycheck, the rest, all the ancillary. So obviously I buy the, the food and certain things, but all the extra stuff, she took a trip to Florida with me. She paid for her plane ticket. That came out of her money. Other things that right. are more expensive, and she saved it. Other things that are more expensive, I'll say, I'll go half with is... you. You know, but... And... But you know what's and interesting? I'm sorry... I'm sorry, yeah. I just want to say, it was interesting, well, before she had a job, uh, because she just turned 16, so she couldn't have a job before, but before she had a job, we would go to CVS, and that was $120 easy. Now we go to CVS, ask me how much we spend. Mm. <laughs> it's different money. when it's your money. Because it's her money, mm. exactly. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's different when it's your money. It hits different. Like, my son thinks twice before he wants to do something, because he knows that once that savings, the money he has in there is gone, He's, he's, he fucked. He's fucked. He's not going to have any more money, but you know, something interesting that my son and I, and I'll make this real quick that he said yesterday mm -hmm. was that he was talking about, uh, taxes and how much you have to pay and you know, real life shit. And he's like, why isn't anyone teaching us this? And my daughter said the same thing. She's like, mom, you know what's, what's funny? My what's... son just asked me the same thing. What percentage like, do I get taken out in taxes? I'm like, she, wow. seen, right. she goes, mom, you have to pay taxes or whatever. And I said, yeah. And so we talked about it. She goes, but they don't teach us this in school. And I'm like, that's right. a problem with our education. That is a system. problem. That is a huge problem. And he goes, who teaches this? And I said, your parents, me, I, yeah. I'm going to teach you. And he goes, and who taught you? And I'm like, I learned the hard way. Yeah. So that's why it's my responsibility to make sure that you know these things, you know, and he's like, that's fucking crazy. I mean, he thought it was insane that we have to pay taxes. <laughs> and the no, was, and I showed her like, what? No, no, no. She, yeah, they don't understand that. And the cost of things like she knows yeah. how much we pay for rent, the light, the gas. And she's like, and, and if you subtract that from what you make and oh, my God, mom. And she's like, how do you do it? Yeah. Like, exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So finally, the bulb goes go, goes off. She's but you going know, to work um, today in about twenty minutes. She's on her way to work. Jose uh, from Apartment Seventy Eight, um, Jose Morales. He has during the summer they have uh, online finance programs for children. 
oh. teaching oh. them of finance 101. So the next time that I see, uh, yeah. I see him post, I'm going to share it because they're very, he says Absolutely. the same thing, you know, and that's something that, you know, schools should be teaching because yeah. it, it's part of life, like life economics. Yeah. Max just asked me, how much do you pay? How, how much do they take out in taxes? And I'm like 33%. He's like, oh my God. So they're going to take 33, a third out of my little sonic paycheck. And I was like, no, you're in a, you're in a lower bracket. bracket He's like, yeah. what is a bracket? And I had to like break this. Th we just had this conversation yesterday. Yeah. So I guess all the kids mm -hmm. are just like discovering this right now. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. they thought that they made a whole, you know, 10 hours, uh, $10 an hour or whatever. Right. Making. Oh yeah. When right. he got his first paycheck, he was like, oh my God. You know, cause when you don't have a dependent or anything, it's just you, they take pretty much your whole entire check right. he was like that's insane and he was like for what why are they taking that and i had to explain to him what it's used for and how when you file taxes you do get it back at the end of the year and blah 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 and he was just like why why aren't we learning this in school yeah mm -hmm. and i and i had no answer for him i was like i have no idea and he was like why aren't we learning how to file our taxes from school the education this is system that we need to know failing our children in real life oh. stuff because mm -hmm. always need, because we didn't learn this in school because you need to learn trigonometry and geometry to do what calculus to, calculus fucking, I, I have never no, used I've that shit in my life <laughs> I've never in my life have I ever had to sit down and say hmm the x to the second power equals times two in parentheses never ever in my life have I ever had to do that Listen, I so, get a basic understanding in case you choose a career path in the sciences or research, you do need it. And so you just have a basic understanding at the, you know, early just, but the rest should be real life stuff. Absolutely. Retirement, saving, the importance, my how mother, your credit affects you, all that. Yes. My, my mother said to, uh, always told me that in DR, they do have a class and they taught this to all the kids, Economia Domestica, it was called. And it was pretty much, but it was for little girls, how to run their household. Oh and, my God. And, and, and that's, and, but that's the so closest whole other thing. conversation. Yeah. But wow. that's like the closest thing that I ever heard of like teaching someone how to like manage their finances in the real world. But well, this was right. clearly in a very patriarchal, you know, societal way. So, right. um, it's different, but in a way, my mom said she benefited a lot from that because she learned everything about keeping a home. You have because to think of, of it, that's what... but you have to think about it as a skill set. and running mm -hmm. a household is a business. If you yes. don't and manage you're the CEO. your house, exactly. And you're the CEO. Absolutely. So women, if you're stay at home moms and somebody's trying to tell you that you're less than tell them that you run a conglomerate because <laughs> managing a home budgeting and everything that goes in it and making sure it all flows. And especially if you mm -hmm. have kids, multiple kids with schedules and all that, you are rocking. Mm -hmm. And if you work yes. even more so, I'm not yeah. saying anything about the men. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> right. it takes a lot to bring it all together. So oh, it does. Yeah. So yeah, our definitely kids does. are really, you know, they're, 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 they're bright. Our kids. Cause I wasn't even asking these questions at their age. So no, I'm really happy. No. So, um, mm. I just want to move on a little bit. Um, mm. everything that's happening in the world today, guys, can we touch a little bit about that? Um, it, where do we even start? Right. It's gone from bad to worse. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, don't, I know. don't even understand anymore. Um, I'm really happy. I, I actually, I, I don't know. If, I want to say I was not surprised at the verdict because to me it was a no brainer for Chauvin. Where were you? Where were you when you heard uh, Chauvin's uh, verdict, the guilty verdict? Sitting in front of my computer. Where were you? Sitting in front of my computer. I was, I was in, in my car on my way home from work. This is, I feel like, one of those moments in history that you're going to remember where you were yeah. when you heard, when you heard mm -hmm. that. But I think I it's where were you? And I, I was yeah, on the subway. She's actually on the subway. Cry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I started to cry, and uh, because I was like, I can't, I can't believe that finally, you know. And this right. is not justice, but it's accountability. Exactly. Because how do you, you know? I mean, I think that there are so many tentacles still left out there. So many people that, you know, stuff hasn't happened. But I think it's a big deal. And so, like I said, right. I don't. I wasn't surprised because I felt that there was really no other decision to be made. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I was hearing the commentary and some people were like, I was shocked and I was like, oh my God, if he wasn't found guilty, I don't know what, I, I would have lost all hope for this country, for this world. Because well, what about with the clear. Eric Gardner case? Like uh, that was clear cut. Everybody thought and Pantaleo, uh, whatever his name yeah. is, they're actually going to reinvestigate that. They're opening that up again. Oh, they, yeah? they need yeah, to. They need to. Mm -hmm. I just I, I like I said, I and then I heard some other people say, you know, I'm happy this happened. And I'm, but it's we still have a long way to go. And I think we still have a long right. way to go. A lot of people were questioning the other officers as well. Like, why weren't they charged? They were there and did nothing. So what's so, happening oh, they're, with that? They're, they're, they're being charged. It's in the summer. It's in yeah. the summer mm -hmm. because there has to be a thing. And I've been watching, I don't know if you guys watch Queen Sugar, but Queen Sugar uh, on OWN, it's following. And uh, Oh, don't tell me. I haven't watched the season because oh, I want to binge it. You have to watch it. It's very, very I don't, powerful. I've never watched it. But maybe oh, my I God. Did. You would love I, it. I, I don't even I know like, what Queen Sugar is. What is that? Oh, my God. Second, I feel like Lizette, I'm having a Lizette moment right now. Let's take a pause. You <laughs> don't know Queen, Queen Sugar? Sugar? I don't know Queen Sugar. So don't say anything, Mari. So it's okay. on OWN. Okay. And you can binge it on Netflix uh, or, or on OWN. But just, okay. start, just get a feel for it and let us know what you think. And okay. yes. I think it's extremely powerful. Talks a lot about race relations in the country, family relations. The is dynamics. it a series? Yes. Is it a series based on what's going on or it's a talk show? What is None it? of it above. It's a show. It's a show. It's a show. It's, it's like, fiction. And it takes place in, I think, in Louisiana, right? New Orleans. The, the, the current. 19th, ninth Ward. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, current. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. But I mean, the so this is the last season, and so the current episode is obviously uh, a lot of what's happening parlays with what's happening in the world today. Um, Interesting. Yeah, they're wearing masks and COVID and everything else or whatever. But the I blame you guys for never telling me about this. But okay. but wait, but the initial I thought I had. I thought we had. To I don't. The, the initial episode. Maybe. There's a lot of interracial relationships and children and how that affects family dynamics. Ray, I mean, there's a little bit of everything. Um, no, but okay. I, I love it. I love it. But in any case, um, well, I can't say anything, but it, it really is talking to accountability for things that you may have done, whether it's 15 years ago or whatever, you know, and if you're standing by and you're watching this happen and you're not saying let up or move back or we had him under control or pushing him in the car and say, wait, just sit him on the, on the stoop for a second until everybody calms down. Let's take a step back. Because continuing to shove him in the car while he's fighting back, let's just take him out, sit him down, whatever. Too, too much it's going just, on. It's just yeah. too much. Like, you just need to back up. He's in handcuffs. Just hold him aside. You know, and I'm not trying to Monday morning quarterback, but I think there's so many things that could have gone right here. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, so many things went wrong. And if you're, you don't have to be the knee on the neck to be held accountable for the end result of what happened. Right. So right. I, I hope this brings some peace to the family from a personal standpoint. Uh, I think that as a country, we just have a lot, you know, we have a lot to go. Yeah. I well, mean, there, there's, um, I'm sorry, okay. there's a, uh, there's going to be the, the George Floyd justice and policing act. Okay. Have you guys heard of that? No, no. Where there's going there. Um, it was actually, um, it passed. But, um, well, it's still waiting. They're still waiting. The Democrats all voted for it. So you know how that goes. Right. But it pretty much is about, like, more accountability. And someone, I, I, I don't know, I was watching the news because I was just, like, it was, I was just, like, super emotional when I heard the news. But um, they were saying that they're going to also um, require officers not to stand by like what you were saying liz like when an officer the officer has a responsibility to stop the his or her partner from um you know using excessive force and right. you know calling it out de-escalating the officers as well right. as the situation listen because so, sometimes if you're immersed in the situation you may not be able to see beyond you and that's human you know your adrenaline is you have a situation or whatever and if you're immersed in that but if you're standing back from it you may be able to see something that i'm not seeing 
And mm. not that I'm trying to be malicious and doing that. I, I'm not intending to kill you or whatever, but you're so immersed in the in the, whatever's happening that you're unable to see another outlet. You as a person standing not involved in that situation immediately are able to see something else. And so that I think there's a responsibility to act on I that I feel like as, well. as a human being, you're obligated to do that. Absolutely, ob- absolutely. Even as a human being, you're absolutely. obligated to do that. Like that like security guard, that, you know, that the lady got, the Asian lady got punched in the face and he went and he closed the door to the to the thing. I'm like, yeah. what did he That should do? be a crime. That should I'm be a like, crime. Well, they, they're actually, they were fired and I think they're actually, um, they may investigate them or whatever, I don't know, but they, they may get in trouble for, for doing and that. Listen, I get the other side of it. There are many people who have intervened and they got killed themselves or injured. And I, I get that 100%. Um, but I, I I don't know that I can see somebody either being pummeled or abused or whatever and not intervene yeah. in some way. I, I, I don't know. Right. We have to we have to look out for each other as human beings. Yeah. But like the day of that, that we, you know, that we all heard the guilty verdict at the same time, a 16 year old girl got shot by an officer. And it just feels like since George Floyd, right. every other like breaking news is white cop kills black, black kid, yeah. black man, black woman, black child, like, or Brown, like, I'm sorry, but I, it almost feels retaliatory to me. Like there's a message across the board, like, oh, you are going to complain. You're going to, so now we're going right. to do it twice as much. I'm yeah, sorry. Cause uh-huh. I don't, tr- I, I'm so distrustful of, you know, the, the slave catching mentality in which the police department was based that I just don't understand how yeah. trained officers have to react with killing when they don't kill their own at the same rate. No. They just don't. They don't confuse a taser with a gun when it's a white person, you know. Right. So, to me, that I don't I, understand. I'm, just, that, I'm that, not buying it. There, I'm just not buying that. any so of it. So I, I, so I don't agree with your comment that it's retaliatory. I, I happen to have worked and continue to work in my current profession with a lot of great officers that, on a daily basis show extreme empathy and compassion to all people of color. And I am one of those people that I, I, cause I'm in a lot of crisis scenes in my current work or whatever, and cops are involved all the time. And one of the things that I encounter when people call the crisis line is I say, you know, is there aggression or violence? And yeah, they're breaking this or whatever. And I said, so I have to respond with PD and they're like, absolutely not click. And so I'm educating people and I say, so I'm the one char- in charge of the scene despite the fact that I'm not wearing the uniform because I'm the mental health clinician, but I cannot respond without police. And then it's a conversation and they're like, no, you don't understand. And I said, I do. I, I'm living in this world and I get it. And I, I found myself a lot lately educating people on why I have to bring PD with me to somebody who's swinging a bat and really going off the rails. You know, because in, in, in that profession, in my thing, I'm not able to restrain anybody. Um, we're limited in terms of what we can do. But regardless, I'm in charge of the scene. So whatever's happening, I'm watching and I'm addressing it and saying, yeah, no, this is appropriate for this mental health condition. This is all I need. This is the amount of force I need or restraint I need or whatever. So I'm in that position a lot lately, more than I would like to. But um, I, 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 I think that it's important i think it's what's happening now is happening too much too soon it's pervasive and we really have to reform policing from an education standpoint um cultural education mental health education as much as you do the driving and the shooting range and all that there has to be a huge block on culture and understanding differences and sensitivity training and de-escalation and escalation, all of that. We have to really go back and say, what are we doing more of or not? And right. beyond that though, I think it's also important not to group everything together because there are justifiable shootings and we don't shoot to kill, we shoot to stop the threat. Should you happen to die, you could uh, die from I a don't taser. Know. I, I don't know, know that, that I agree with you. 
No, no, no. So I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about, uh, I'm thinking. I'm talking about the training. No, but I don't, that's what I'm saying because from, and and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but from what I've heard from other officers, I'm not, I've never been, you, you, you've been, so you know. Um, but from what I've heard is that when you, when they train you, they don't train you to shoot in the leg. They train you to kill. So that's not what I'm yes. saying. And they so were, no, no, no. they were so saying that. Oh, that okay. So, no, 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 okay. No, no, no. So okay. this whole thing about shooting in the leg is retarded. I'm sorry. I didn't no, I know. Word. This thing about shooting in the leg is the most bananas. Nobody trains to shoot in the leg. What is that? I'm going to pick a body part. No, that's no, no, not- no. But this is what civilians say. Well, why didn't they? Why didn't they shoot him in the arm? Or why didn't because, they? Whatever. Because and because that's part of the not knowing. Okay. Right. The training is shooting to stop the threat. Okay. And that that's just the basics. It's not shoot to kill. It's shoot to stop the threat. Do people? End but wouldn't up dying that be whether... shoot to kill? But wouldn't no. that be shoot to kill no. because you want no. to? No. Well, because... so then why do they, why does everybody wind up dying when it's well, a no, black because, around person? Well, because you can die from a taser. You can die from a restraint. There, there's so many reasons that you can die. You can die from it. You could trip and fall on the street and die. Um, that's yeah, not, but I'm that's talking not... about the hands of an officer. Usually, no, I get that. But it's... there are people who have but... died who have been tased. Can I ask of you a question? Heart condition or something like that. Um, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Liz, yeah. can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why were tasers introduced to policing? So I'm not the expert on everything, but what I want to tell you is that tasers, batons, all these other things were introduced because they are a lesser use of force. So the conversation is about you escalate as the situation warrants, right? So you have all these other available tools, including your mouth, right? Um, so you want to start at the lowest, and as the situation warrants or mandates, then you move as needed. The goal is always to not to have to put hands on people to de-escalate an attempt. Sometimes that's not the case. And, you know, things are happening and you have to react in a moment's notice. And, you know, it's very easy. And given everything that's happening today, I certainly understand the thought process, right. um, but it's very easy, never having been in that position, to say, "Well, you could have done this when you have well, the, mayhem happening." The officer was a sniper that shot the. Uh, what was okay. her name? Mac- Mac- uh, that's what I was just. Uh, that's what I was just uh, looking up. Ma- yeah, he's Makia. I don't. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Makia Bryant. I'm sorry. Ma- he's Ma- military Bryant. trained okay. sniper. Okay. Okay. So that's why in that mayhem he was able to. Um, shoot her because it, it looked like you know the girl in the pink. She they were like in, and there was in a guy of... kicking another girl in the face. Yeah. That was a whole hot but mess. he was able to shoot her, right. so he knew exactly what he was doing, and she wasn't threatening. Right. So the conversation... him no, but it wasn't that. So let me ask you a question. And again, I'm not. I haven't looked at the whole thing or whatever. I'm just speaking from just a broader perspective that it's just very important to look at situations individually not all collective because there are some justified shootings okay and some people don't die or whatever but there are some justified shootings the other piece of that is that if he had not done what he did and she stabbed the girl in the pink because some of the video that i was seeing and just very she already was in the motion what would be the conversation then well, here's the thing. I just saw a video of a guy that actually swung his knife at an officer, and the officer was able to take the knife out of his hand. I've and seen that, yeah. And no one died. So why did that have to be the first so thing So you're saying he could have rushed do? up to her and grabbed her? Or there were other her. officers there. Yeah. Okay. These officers, there were so many. These were girls fighting. And that's a, that's a question. They, that's a question. Why is they that could the first have thing just you're going come to? Yeah. in, but this guy just walks in, guns blazing. Like he just, he pulled up and pop, pop, pop. That's it quick. And I mean, okay, I understand it was melee, whatever, but this is a person that was extra trained. Yeah. So this was very deliberate. So I find no excuse. I find no justification. If you can disarm a grown man, then you know what? Then 
there needs to be more training. Then there needs to be something else done because, because let me tell you something. If we that are regular people and don't have the training that these officers have, thank you, um, that these officers have, you know, and we do some shit like that, we go to jail. No, absolutely. You know, we shoot somebody, we react on emotion. You're not supposed to react on emotion. Right. You're not supposed to. You're supposed to evaluate the situation, de-escalate it, and not be the perpetrator. Like, you can't, Agreed. like, it, it's like, no, in, in, in this situation, it always switches into right. the officer. I mean, even that kid, what, what, uh, what uh, I forgot, it was, da- was it Dante? Dante White. Um, the, uh, Is it Dante White? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, it's just so many times. It's just like, oh, I thought, right. oh, I thought, oh, I thought. If I do, oh, I thought. Right. And, the, and the piece of it is, and the piece of it is that the the obviously the problem, everything that you're saying, I agree with. The other piece of it that if you look at the other side of it, you see um, interactions with people that are not people of color, whether it's a video at a at a precinct or the famous video of this asshole with a gun. In, in in the in the um, what was it right after the the Capitol Hill thing? at the black at the Black oh, Lives the black, Matter right so um, that match, I yeah. don't even understand what the fuck that was um, and how he was just allowed to roam free or why so when you look at situations mm-hmm. like that and you compare to the reactions you can't help but think like what the hell is happening and why is the aggression right. and why is it so immediate towards people of color and not so immediate towards people that are not of color because there are enough videos out there of interactions. To prove that. Exactly. Yeah. So to 100%. Prove that. I, I think, I think, and this is just my opinion, that uh, people are tend to be a little bit more scared or feel threatened by a person of color as opposed to a white person. And, and, and I say problem. that that's an implicit. And bias. I say that it's because an implicit bias. Yes. right. And that's and, a problem. And, and, and that's a big, and issue. that that's is a systemic problem. And that is a, and, that, and that's become factual in the sense that when you look at videos now, because everything now is documented, yeah. when you look at videos and not involving police officers, there was a video that came out uh, that Sean uh, King put up where there's this young boy walking in his neighborhood. He lives in his na- in that neighborhood. I saw and that. And a sergeant, he's from the army or whatever, came up to him and said, you don't belong here simply because he was a black man walking in the neighborhood was it an he doesn't you don't i don't remember it was uh, i think a lot of military families live in that oh, neighborhood okay. um from what i gather and he was like i've been here x amount of years i've never seen you okay so but who are you who are you like you know and it's just to me that's a problem he already felt threatened simply because it was a black man because i promise you that if it was a white man he would not have approached him he would not have asked him any questions nothing so or what the about, people what about or the, the people in the neighborhood who call the police on people in the neighborhood because they're, they're suspicious and i think that right. what, about, what about the kids skin color yeah the kids here in jersey did you see those kids that yes. the cops came no. and took their in bikes away Perth, because they Perth, didn't have Perth and Boy? It happened in Perth and Boy. I yes. think I heard something, but I don't remember what happened with that. These kids were riding their bikes through the town. They weren't even staying. I they saw, were just riding yes. through, and they were told that they needed a license to ride in that town that they don't even live in, that they had no idea. And then right. the officers took their bikes. I saw away. so like. So yes. let me tell you something about that video. I don't know if you've watched it to the full extent, but. It was, I think, uh, a captain. The ones that wear the white shirts. I forget what yes, they yes. what they are. What they represent? A lieutenant, a lieutenant or captain? Lieutenant. Uh-huh. So he he stopped them and he was actually telling them, "I'm going to let you off with a warning because they were not from the neighborhood." And he's like, "You guys can't ride your bikes here. Unfortunately, you know, you guys need to register your bikes. Uh, they need uh-huh. to have a license." And I think they do that because okay. if the bike is stolen, now there's a way of tracking the bike. But they're not from the neighborhood. They're not from that county. So they don't know this. They were, it was, you know, supposed, and the guy's telling him, uh, the, the, the lieutenant or whatever is telling them, you know, you guys are drawing attention to yourself because you're 20 deep riding bikes. Uh, people are swerving around you. You know, it could be a problem. So I'm letting you guys off with a warning. Please just, you know, try to stay off the streets. Don't be a nuisance and be careful because you do need to have it licensed. But then and there was another. They do that. They require you to do that. Yes, I didn't know that, but that's good to yeah. know. So then there was another woman that came, a police officer, and I think now she is a 
sergeant or something. And she said, well, I was pulling you over. And he was like, I rode past you. You didn't say anything to me. And she was like, well, obviously you saw me because I saw you. So we saw each other kind of thing. And uh, you were being a nuisance. And he was like, but you didn't say anything. The kid is saying, but you didn't say anything to me. You're coming now because this officer stopped us. And she was, and he, because she didn't like the way that he responded she was like, and now you're getting arrested, and now I'm taking all of your bikes. And they were like, we live, I forget what town. How are That's we supposed to get to home? Me. That's crazy He was like, to me. hold on. They were like, how are we supposed to get home? Can we just leave? And she was like, not my problem. And see, that's not my them problem. In place. If that's I was that's her putting boss, them in their place. No, you're, no, no. If, you're out if, of line. If, that's if, what I was, she was doing. if I was her boss, she would be sitting fucking... Writing reports and that that's wrong. So so now the kids are looking at her and they're saying, but he is letting us off with a warning and they're like they're looking at him and he's like, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, if she's saying she was part of this before I came on, she has the right. That's what he was saying. She has the right to like manage this situation. And if she was. Boss, if he's a lieutenant. He could change that up. Well, we don't she, know what ranks they were. Yeah. We don't know what ranks they were, but he did let her handle it. And her whole situation was, I'm taking the bikes. And these kids had to, now they're walking in a neighborhood that they don't know, 20 deep. Guess what's going to happen? It's yeah. a setup. Guess what the, like Marty guess said, what's going to happen? Guess yeah. what's going to happen? No, he, so. here's, yeah. No, here's the thing. It's, um, it's a problem. Uh, Trevor, Trevor Noah was talking about it because they're saying, oh, you know, there's not, you know, they're not all bad apples. You become a fucking bad apple when you stand by and let shit happen. Sorry. Excellent. It's a fucking Excellent. rotten tree. It's a rotten tree. Yeah. Take the shit down. Start it over. Plant some new seeds. Because it's like, I'm sorry, I know not everybody is. But you know what? As, as, a, as a teacher, you see another teacher doing something wrong, you have to, by obligation... Stop it, report it, do something. Listen, I don't want to oversimplify and, and insult, but if I was with Zuleika and she littered, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? What are oh, you I'm doing? sure you would. <laughs> I stopped right. in the middle of the street and made my son pick something up. I literally turned around. So you have to, it, there has to be accountability. And again, I'm not trying to oversimplify, but I'm saying if on the simplest of things, and you're right, it has to go from the bottom up. Um, switching gears a little bit, what do you guys think about what Cuomo said? Chris Cuomo, who's Zuli's boyfriend. <laughs> I think he's, I think he's absolutely right. I think, you know what? I they agree with him and I've actually, the OP, so let's first, tell, let's first problem. tell people, I've said that was, before. let's first tell people what Chris Cuomo said in case somebody doesn't know. Does anybody know? Oh, well, do you have it? I mean, I, I, can, I, I can just say I, it at the top I, of my head. Yes, I, I yes, can tell yes. you because this is things that I've said before. So he's just saying what we're thinking. He's just saying it out loud. So but verbatim, ahead, verbatim, mighty say what he said. No, I, well, well, he pretty much said, you know, um, it, this the you know people would be more outraged if it were white children getting killed by the cops. Right. So let's Which... look up. Let's do two sides of it. Some people are saying that he's advocating violence and saying that everything that he said, you know, is negative. Blah 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 blah. And then other people mm. are saying, I support you. You're right on that. And you know, taking he it. Is. Oh, well, he is absolutely. Out of context. He is absolutely. absolutely. When you know, you know what. When crack was killing black and brown people, it wasn't such a big, you know, whatever. When meth and heroin started hitting the white communities, it became an epidemic. Yes. Oh, we must do something. It's no longer criminal. It's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a societal issue. But when, when our kids are smoking weed, they go to jail. Yep. You know what I'm saying? When our kids are, 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 are doing drugs, they're criminals, they're goons and whatever. But when white kids are doing it, they need rehab. They need help. They need support. We must do something. It changes. The, the, it's just, it's blatant. And I don't understand when people even like question that. It's so yeah. fucking obvious. It's, 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 not, it's not even thinly veiled. It's out there. You suck it. Cógelo. Tómalo. I, That's why right. I'm always, I'm always... I'm anxious because I have, my children are black and brown. Yeah. I, I, I'm always concerned. I'm always concerned because they are going to be treated differently always, always, no matter what, by no fault of their own. And when people try to, to excuse it away, it is insulting yeah. because yeah. they don't even try to hide it. Not the government, not the agencies, 
No one. Society doesn't try to hide it. Mm-hmm. People fucking, you're at, like, it, it, I have friends that lived, that were already born and alive when they were still lynching people, when people were still yeah. owning people. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? So this is not that far removed. We're still kind of in, we live in a racist society. Kind the of? United we're States in it. Is, Marie, we're not kind of, we're in it. You know what? We are, we are, and you know, we're so used to the treatment that some people don't even understand it or realize it or acknowledge it they just think that's just how things are but when you go to another country when other countries look at us we live i i think it was uh the uh, um so, uh, politician in africa just i was just listening on an npr on npr and they were talking about the treatment of african people in this country yeah. some people have been advised not to travel to this country because of the way our society is do you know that so, sunny sunny Hughes, uh, Houston? Uh, she's a, the attorney, one of the co-hosts of um, yes. our sister the program, The View. <laughs> um, <laughs> she was, uh, yes, because we're, you know, we're La Vista. Yeah. Um, she was, <laughs> she was uh, commenting on the day of the verdict, and she says that she said that her son is currently in South Africa on school or business or whatever, and that she actually feels that he's safer in South Africa. South Africa, than here in the United States, and she was crazy, almost in tears about you, that. You have no, I, you have no idea because I think you know I come across very you know aggro about this, but um, you know I work in criminal court. I see, I saw it, I saw it, my own eyes, I saw it, and my kids, you know, are not white passing. There's no way mm-hmm. any of them are white passing, you know, and so. It's such, it's so scary. It's just so, so scary to me. Like to me, I, I'm not so much afraid of them getting jumped or robbed or anything. I'm afraid of the cops. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah. And I just want to say something from El Salon Cuano, because I'll speak for everybody. We're not advocating retaliation, violence, or anything of that nature mm-hmm. in any way, because, you know, when talking about the Chris Cuomo comment, um, I think that we, we just, we want justice and people to be seen for who they are and right. just education and uh, it's just a sad situation yeah I, I had i had made a comment a few years ago um i was talking with a group of people and i had said you know gun issue is not going to be resolved or it's not going to change until the families of those that work for the nra start getting murdered yeah. um and a lot of, and, and you know, I had someone say, well, you know, the NRA has nothing to do with uh, gun control because they are they're a, a nonprofit organization. It's the government basically, and I'm like, right, they lobby but the they, government. They Hello? they are lobbyists. They are lobbyists, and they can control it, and they can change the narrative, and they can put in more. I'm not saying that you cannot own a gun. You can own a, a gun. But what I am saying is there has to be more background check. There has to be more laws. You can't walk around with a fucking rifle. First of all, why why do people own these rifles that are why meant for war? One? For war. Thank like, you. are you going to war? Is there a war happening that we don't know about? I mean, is there something you know that we don't with know? These extended but, clips and these automatic mm-hmm. the silencers and all this. And, what is- and we have to understand that when these laws were first put in place, people were fucking, what are they called, muskets? These guns where people mm-hmm. were, you know, it was a different time. We need to change that. We need to move according to the times. And people should not be having automatic weapons in their home for protection. I am sorry, you can own a gun, but you should not own a fucking whole, what, what do you call that, a whole arsenal, arsenal of freaking, I should not, you should not be, Freaking grenades! None of that shit. You should not so be then, able to walk so into then a Walmart. So they're going to tell you, and they're going to tell you, you're violating my Second Amendment right. Which so is why I'm Second saying, Amendment rights. No, but that's yeah, why I'm that's saying say. it needs to change. It needs to be amended because yeah. that is not correct. The amendment There's needs just, to be it, amended. The the <laughs> amendment needs to be amended because how it's about, just how about the kid. The kid with the mass shooting. The mom reported him, and they took his weapons away. And he was just able to turn around and go but buy another exactly. one and shoot everybody up in, exactly. at that's, FedEx. Was it FedEx? That is a problem. There should be a way where you cannot buy a gun immediately. There has to be a process. 
okay, put in your application, we will vet you, and if everything comes out clear, then we will then provide you with the firearm. That's all I'm saying. Do you understand that in order for you to adopt a dog or a cat, you Mm -hmm. go through an extensive process and you have to wait and you're vetted? And in order for you to adopt a child, if we're going to go up, it, it's an extensive process. But I could probably go tomorrow and buy a gun. Oh, absolutely. With no problem. Absolutely. With no issues. Absolutely. And that's the country we live in. That's the country well, we live in. No. But guys, um, we are, we're, we've actually again. exceeded our time. Again. Again. <laughs> but I didn't want to end without acknowledging you know, the loss of all our hip hop icons, not all of them, but so many, three close together, three Three. G shock, black Rob and DMX. I've, I've been like so devastated. My kids are like, okay, mom. Cause I've been like in our little group chat, I've been sharing, you know, all the videos and stuff, but isn't that, you know, a lot of people, I don't know that you know who G-Shock is, Liz, because he's very old school. I was in elementary school. Do the Humpty Dance. With the Humpty Dance. dance. If you hear the music, you you probably know who he is. But, you know, this is part of us growing up. This This was part of the music I used to listen to. Actually, Tupac was... He first came out in their in their group called Digital Underground. Yeah. Underground, so, yes. Underground. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The only so, person I know from there was DMX. The rest I No, he was no, DMX Oh, from the, no, was, from the group she means, from oh, the people oh, that passed okay. away. Yeah. yeah. And then you have oh, Black you didn't Rob. Know Black Rob? Nope. Like whoa? Nope. I met this bad chick of town. She was she whoa. She was whoa. No. Had me fucked up. We were in the we were clubbing, Marty. Marty, you and I were clubbing when that when that song came out. Nope. So oh, yeah, I'm learning it now because of my kids. So I'm I'm no. immersing myself a little more because you know you need to. Uh, but I no, DMX is the only one that I know. But nonetheless, no. yeah. it, there's still a lot. Yeah, no, it's all it. sad. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all sad. sad. And the thing is that, and, and the thing is, so, uh, I was reading yesterday that they were saying you know artists should have like a union or something because there's no retirement for rappers you know it's right. either you make it through or you have to reinvent yourself right and a lot of people are um looking at diddy because you know diddy did nothing to help black rob or so they say but you know who knows because mm-hmm. there's only so much money you can pump into a person if that person mismanages then that's right. not your fault right. but um but and but i all I... of these guys Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Before we ended it, I, I just wanted to just say black men, men of color, brown men need to go get checked, need to go get physicals. You need to be on top of your health. Um, you know, I don't know what uh, uh, G-Shock died of. I don't know what was it that he, what was, what was his health problem or whatever. They don't, they don't know. They don't but, know. Um, gonna, they're going to do an autopsy. But we do have a problem with men of color uh, doing physicals and going to the doctor and you have to be on top of that. You must be on top of your health, but go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. I was just, you know, I was just saying how, you know, these guys were like so big back in their day. And sometimes, you know, like at least in black Rob's um, situation, it was sad. It was just sad. His existence was sad at the end. And, you know, I, I mean, I don't know anything about the music industry or how it works, but there should be a way for people, you know, for them, for the mm-hmm. people that are on top to, you know, still contribute somehow in some way to, you know, the the ones that, uh, you know, that paved the way for the artists that we have today because, yeah. you know, these were pioneers, you know? Absolutely. And, but you know, and they're some, forgotten. There are some unions, whether it's in the acting world and then in some of, in the, some music community, there is a union. There, um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just don't think that rapper. in the rap, it's like that yeah. organized. You oh, know? okay. So maybe they should. It's something to consider. Yeah. It's something to consider. But anyways, guys. This was interesting, and we never even got to our topic. <laughs> no, but that's okay. We have another episode on another week from today. Yeah. But it's yeah. just like, it, I think you it's know, important it... that we have the conversations that we're having because mm-hmm. it's what's happening in the world today. So um, it's important to shed light on, you know, these convers- these issues. I want to have lighter conversations. I know that it seems like sometimes we're having these very dark, very serious conversations. Unfortunately, this is the world we currently live in. But I want to start having lighter conversations. It's just been been a heavy year, and it's just hard to be 
yeah. like it's like it takes makes an eff- you have to make an effort to be light you yeah. know because otherwise then you're you're being flippant you're not acknowledging exactly. you know exactly. what's happening in but society but we can do we can and, do both you know, we can, you know. Well, we did. We started. Ignorance. We started with my asshole. Yeah. So that was kind of like, <laughs> yeah. Right. But hey, listen. I think that anybody, that anybody who knows us, knows that we stay in touch and we try to stay relevant and substantive with what's happening in the world today and acknowledge. I think you should start an OnlyFans, fan, Mari. <laughs> my asshole should start an OnlyFans. I can't. When you put your feet on OnlyFans, I will put my asshole. Nobody <laughs> wants to see my feet. <laughs> oh my Ooh, Anyways, God. that's all. That oh. picture of the foot. Who sent that, by the way? Mari. Oh, no, I saw that. Uh, <laughs> I sent it, but. Is that a real person, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, with two Oompa Loompas. <laughs> <laughs> on their oh feet. my the, god oh my god the first and second toes are tattooed oompa loompas. anyways guys this is all the time we have thank you yes. for joining us ladies uh you know we'll see everyone next week you know how to support till next time bye, bye. ladies of el salon the chronicles oh yeah ladies of el salon the chronicles escuchan